Happy Wednesday, everybody. Dr. Muse here with Dr. Alm here for another clinical coffee chat. And today we want to talk about the shoulder and something more specific about the shoulder, something that somebody comes in with fairly often here, whether we know it or not, and that's rotor cup tears. Or more commonly known as rotator cuff. AKA cuff rotator cuff. Tears. Cuff, 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 cuff tears. Yeah, so this is actually a pretty uh, uh, normal thing to have very often, especially as we age. It's almost like wrinkles on the inside is what I tell people. It's kind of like a... Uh, wrinkles on the inside. That's yeah, pretty... standard aging creative. process, just like arthritis. <clears throat> All of us will have it at some point. Maybe not the rotator cuff tear, but... Very often, people may have these tears and they can be um, asymptomatic or they, they don't even really notice it. But before we really get into it, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy. So what, yeah, what is it? Yeah. So the, the rotator cuff is a really, really important collection of muscles that basically attach from the shoulder blade and then they wrap around the arm bone, the humerus. And their job is to kind of keep that guy sitting properly in the shoulder socket. So centrated is what we would call that. It's a pretty difficult task though because there's such a small surface area, so the strike zone is very, very tiny. And if you're not able to keep the, the shoulder joint centrated, then it's going to sort of bounce around and maybe cause damage to the rotator cuff or some other shoulder stuff that we might talk about later on, like a, a labral tear or biceps tendon issues. And the rotator cuff is incredibly important for making all of the microscopic you know, adjustments to the shoulder positioning as it goes through any motion. And the shoulder joint itself, or the shoulder complex as we would call it, is actually made up of four joints. So it's, it's a, a humongous collection of joints that allows us to have this massive range of motion that's so important for function in sports. But the bigger the range of motion, the more challenging it is to actually stabilize or centrate. So the rotator cuff is, you know, uh, a, plays a primary role in that and is also sort of, you know, the sometimes the first guy that gets injured when your shoulder is not functioning properly. Yeah, and like you said, it it's responsible very much for some of these micro adjustments of, of that humerus in the glen, glenoid, the joint that it sits in. So oftentimes, <clears throat> people who are who have a rotator cuff tear, it may not be from this major event where it happened. Like I mentioned when we started, this could be degeneration over time. So there could be these micro tears that just begin to develop over the years. And a lot of times it's, you know, we just see these small oscillations where it's just trying to maintain this, this centrated position. And then maybe at some point there's that right time, right place where it actually does tear more. So we have things like full thickness tears where there's a full uh, tearing of the, the common tendon. There could be partial thickness tears where obviously that's not all the way through. And then we can also just have these micro tears in the, in the or muscle. Full, or full rupture. <laughs> yeah, or full blown rupture. So there's a, there's a broad variety of, of ways that the rotator cuff can be, can be affected. Um, but let's get a little bit more into the, the assessment. So how do we first figure out if it's the rotator cuff causing the issue or well, maybe for, it's the, coming from the, somewhere could be coming else. from somewhere else all right the the symptoms that people typically are going to get when you have mm -hmm. rotator cuff issues now that that could be it's aggravated it's it's mildly fraying it could be a, a, a tear um, I, I mean i've seen a wide variety of severity of presentation <clears throat> that doesn't match the actual imaging and that's consistent with research but someone might come in and they have you know, a horrible tear in one of their rotator cuffs and they just get a tiny bit of shoulder pain if they sort of reach up here. Mm -hmm. But what you're typically getting is gonna be, you know, pain on the outside of the shoulder. You might get pain when you're, when you're moving your arm up, so abduction. A lot of times there'll be a catching point right around, you know, when your arm's horizontal. Um, we'll kind of describe what's going on with that later on, but like that, that catching, difficulty reaching overhead, pinching and pain when you reach up overhead, and then just sort of that aching there. Now, those can come from lots and lots of sources. So a lot of times what I found in my practice is when somebody comes in with a quote unquote torn rotator cuff, the symptoms are actually coming from trigger points in one of those rotator cuff muscles. So usually the, the infraspinatus or the teres minor, these are these two small muscles on the back side of the, uh, of the shoulder blade. And those, when you sort of push on those trigger points, they'll radiate and refer into the shoulder joint itself, maybe into the front, mimicking sort of a biceps tendon problem. Or a lot of times right on the, where your deltoid comes together on the side of your arm, they'll complain about achiness and pain there. So in that case, 
yes, the rotator cuff or that muscle is structurally altered, aggravated, damaged, whatever you want to call it, but the symptoms are actually coming from the trigger point. Now, trigger points themselves, this is, again, a little bit more, you know, deep end of the pool, they're sort of neurological expressions of dysfunction. So if you have dysfunction in the body, then you're going to get trigger points, and those trigger points can actually produce your pain. The question is, where is it coming from? And that's what Brad was alluding to. We have to do a thorough exam to figure out, like, well, okay, is this a primary rotator cuff issue? Is it a primary shoulder complex issue? Is it a neck issue, or is it a, a sort of a core issue? Those are the major ones that I think that we would right. see. Um, the one that's very, very common that gets overlooked a lot of times at other offices is they're not considering the cervical spine's role in the process. And I, I would argue that the vast majority of the time, it's definitely contributing. And more than half the time, I think it's the primary cause. And I mean that literally, like you could come in. I mean, I had a friend the other day, he had shoulder problems. He lives in Chicago. He had been treated for nine months with shoulder pain. Uh, and he had all the, the structural findings on his MRI to match. So sort of like, okay, the, the diagnosis of rotator cuff you know, injury makes sense. But we took him through a thorough cervical exam or examination of his cervical spine, a la McKenzie, and were able to abolish his symptoms just on the phone. So just, I just talked to, him through, talked to him through it. And by treating the, the cervical spine, we got rid of his pain and restored normal, full, symmetrical range of motion. So it's really important that you, we go in and we actually look at the cervical spine because if it's the primary cause and you're treating the shoulder, you will just spin your wheels. Like you'll just keep, these are the ones that you keep going to therapy and you're like, yeah, it feels better when I leave, but then it's the same later that day or the next day. So the neck is really, really important. You know, other than that, we have to go in and actually then, t if, if we've ruled the neck out, it's not participating, then we have to go in and, and sort of look at the shoulder itself. So that's going to be some manual muscle testing of the different muscles. That's going to be some orthopedic testing that we might go through to see if we can, you know, produce a pinching or a catching or whatever. And then we have to go in and do some functional testing, which is to see how well is this thing actually functioning. And between ruling the neck out, looking at the function of the shoulder and doing some classic orthopedic tests, with or without an MRI, we're usually able to diagnose that you know, it is or is not a primary rotator cuff issue. Right, so he ran through a couple things there. Obviously, it could be the cervical spine. We say that ad nauseum with every other podcast we do. Could be trigger points, which when there's trigger points, those are, like you said, a neurological expression of dysfunction. So we may work more on things like manual therapy to help with those, but more so um, instilling some kind of stability into the shoulder to try to abolish those trigger points. But there are times where it could just be an actual structural pathology of the shoulder or rotator cuff tear, especially once we are reaching like that 55 year mark, that's where we begin to see an uptick in the numbers in terms of rotator cuff tears. We'll do some orthopedic testing, maybe some imaging. Orthopedic testing, we may see things like people not able to fully abduct or raise the arm overhead so they get a little bit of a, a side bend to get it up or even when we bring them up here they'll just it'll just kind of drop back down because they the can't weakness. hold us Extra, it's actual weakness yeah. In there, yeah so there's no structural integrity there to actually hold that that arm up so when we get more into those areas when it's an actual rotator cuff tear well then that's going to require some different things that's where we're going to get more into our um, you know, some of the more physical therapy type stuff. We do need to strengthen that. We do need to work on some of the stability. And at the end of the day, you know, after a round of conservative care, if, if we're just not seeing changes there, the tear's too big, they're not uh, able to perform some of those activities of daily li living, then that may be a referral to someone for something like surgery. But we got to make sure we go through all of our uh, uh, go through all of our steps here, rule out the neck, rule out trigger point referrals, rule out any sort of um, other contributing factors. And then if we have no sort of success with it, then we can confidently say, okay, this is a structural pathology that needs a little bit more beyond what we can do here in the office. Yeah, I mean, I, I break <laughs> rotator cuff or shoulder complaints into four categories. The first one is going to be a, a cervical spine dysfunction. Something's going on with the neck producing that. 
Uh, the next one is going to be a functional problem with the shoulder. So it's not moving correctly and that can cause pain. That's where you're going to get lots and lots of those trigger points in there. Again, you may or may not have any observable findings to the structure of the rotator cuff or the shoulder on an MRI, but you're still getting pain in all the same ways like he discussed, lifting your arm up, you know, reaching to grab something, whatever. So cervical spine, then functional. Then you're going to have actual structural pathology to the shoulder. So that, well, in this case, we'll just stick with the rotator cuff. And that's divided into two categories. One is they will respond to conservative care. The other one is they will not respond to it. So with the first one, cervical spine, obviously we're going to go in and we're going to treat the cervical spine. With the second one, shoulder function problem, that's going to be doing a lot of functional rehab, doing some trigger point work so that we can actually get that shoulder functioning well and then sure enough, they're going to, re they're going to respond great. The next one though, instead of trying to get it to function and control its movements better, you know, getting rid of the, the trigger points, now not only do we have to do you know, what I just described there, but we also have to work on improving the actual physical strength of those muscles. So if you have a partial thickness tear in one of your rotator cuff muscles, that means it's going to, it's going to be unable to produce the, the contractile force to execute your movements in everyday life. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it's not only a control or a stability issue, but it's also a strength issue. And that's where you get into some of the old school, tr more traditional rehab exercises where we're just trying to strengthen the rotator cuff. Right. The last category is the one that, that Dr. Muse just mentioned, and that is we've ruled out and treated all three of the other categories and we've got the imaging to back it up and it's just time to send that person to surgery. Yeah, so to, to really wrap this up, he just mentioned all these steps that we, we prefer to take before that final surgical step. Just like we've talked about in some of our other podcasts, unfortunately, very often that whole process is flipped on its head. Someone gets imaging when they have shoulder pain, oh, there's a tear, let's do surgery. And then it's a failed surgery, AKA they're still having issues. Maybe they even have some new issues from having the surgery. So until we do a full evaluation, go through this conservative care, um, I, would, I would try to withhold as many people as possible from getting that early surgery and exhausting these other things first because oftentimes a rotator cuff uh, repair, they just don't turn out how you would prefer them to and that may be because there wasn't a, a really good uh, attempt at the conservative care first and maybe it's not really the true issue if they do surgery on that rotator cuff. So Yeah, so the, the good news is most rotator cuff injuries, even if you have this very, very scary MRI, are absolutely fixable. So um, it, it is not this dire situation where you're just going to need to go to surgery, you're going to be on medication, or you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do. So they are absolutely fixable. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please comment below and we will uh, answer them back. See ya. <laughs>